My name is Peter Stevens. I'm a vehicle designer. One of the many projects I've been involved with was the McLaren F1. I was at McLaren when we first came up with the concept of this McLaren F1, and I was responsible, I suppose you could, I laughingly say, for all the clean bits, that's to say the exterior, interior, but not the engineering pieces, uh, but I was also responsible for the aerodynamic performance of the car. So what you can see here is the Harrods version. That's a racing version of the McLaren F1. Now, by the time that we went racing with these cars, I had actually left McLaren and was back to being a freelance designer. So with some friends at David Price Racing, we took the basic McLaren, not as given to us by McLaren as a race car, but we took that as a basis and then did a lot of modifications on the car. We kept very quiet about them and it was enormously successful what we did. We ran both a red and white car which was sponsored by West and this green and yellow Harrod sponsored McLaren. So it's great to see it here and it's in fabulous condition. It's owned and driven on the road by a good friend of mine, David Clark. So it's, it's grand that it's here, and it's here with a bunch of fantastic Le Mans cars. Now this was never designed to be a Le Mans racer at all. It was designed as the ultimate road car, but there is no doubt if you put all your engineering effort and design effort into making a fantastic road car, the transition to it becoming a, road, a race car is not as great as if you say, you know, took a Ford of some sort and took that to Le Mans, you wouldn't win. So, unusually and probably uniquely, this was a car that on its first attempt at Le Mans won the race. People have always said you need to do at least two races and in your third year you can go there and expect to win. So it wouldn't be untrue to say that none of us who ran McLarens there expected to win in that first year. But the car worked very well. I tend to say that not exactly we was robbed. We came third with this car, having led most of the race because there was a technical, a small technical element to the customer cars where they were all encouraged to take a new tiny piece of engineering, uh, which didn't work properly. The car that won, which was another McLaren F1, didn't have the new piece and ran faultlessly on the count of that. So we did all feel a little disappointed, but the result of this technical problem was that for the last four hours of the race, Andy Wallace had to drive it without a clutch. So he had to start from the pits, do the entire course, all the gear changes without using the clutch. And even when he came into the pits for tire changes, he didn't have a clutch. So it was a pretty tough deal, and I think the fact that he managed to come third, because he was only overtaken near the end because of the, the slower pace, particularly with the pit stops, uh, so we might have been second, but I like to think we might have won. Very small details that we did. If we come to the back of the car, in, instead of, because I suppose as a team, we like to think that because we'd run a lot of cars in the past, we like to think we knew more about what we were doing. And so this rear wing was one that we designed as a team. And one of the things that I was involved in the design of is such a simple, tiny thing. There's a little catch here, and when you lift it up, you can slide out this carbon piece, which is called a gurney flap, and you can replace it either with a smaller one or with a bigger one. So if it's wet, you might want to put a much bigger gurney flap in. If it's dry and you want to increase your speed, you put a little tiny one in. So it was one of those little attention to detail that we did, and we did others underneath the rear, stiffening up the, the structure a bit. And we also modified the way the radiators work. And one of the, uh, one of the interesting bits, and you can see, when you see this car with other race McLarens, you can notice that it's lower. That's because we had some special windscreens made, which 
were shorter. They didn't come as far down, which meant that we could lower the car because the wheels otherwise would have touched the base of the, of the windscreen. So it was part of all that tiny detail we did, you know. Now there's also, you'll see, we made additional fixings because that hinge for the door, which on the road car would, was fine, but at Le Mans, when you're talking of 240 miles an hour, you want to be very sure, because the number of cars at Le Mans that have lost doors, and if, if you lose a door, you get black flag and you have to come in and desperately try and fix another door. So we knew that losing a door means that you don't have any chance of winning the race. So we doubled up on things like that, made a stronger lower hinge as well. That also retains the windscreen because you can see there are fittings around here too. The car had a heated front screen to stop it misting up at wet races, but the heating element would soften the rubber that glued the windscreen in. Not at Le Mans, but at previous races, there were a couple of cars that actually lost the windscreen because the heating element within the glass had softened the glue. So we were very certain to make these fixings also hold the screen in. Because the more, I mean, my theory for winning Le Mans is all you should do is put petrol and tires. If you have any other problem, you're not going to win because other people who just put petrol and tires will be ahead of you. So you want to remove every possibility for other things going wrong. Hence all those little details. I mean, obviously, one of the things that the McLaren F1 is most famous for is the central driving position. You know, and the central driving came from a discussion that Gordon Murray, who was the engineer on this project, and Ron Dennis had together. Ron initially thought a McLaren F1 should just have a central seat, but it was explained to him that other people liked taking their mates for a drive, and so we came up with a package that put the two passengers either side and slightly behind the driver. One of the great things was it made the car so much easier to position. We hadn't really expected that, but the first prototype that we made at McLaren, I can remember being just pushed out of the workshop. You know, you've got a prototype of a car probably worth millions of pounds, and you think, oh, the entrance looks a bit narrow, you know, am I going to scrape it? When I was sitting in there, it felt totally natural, and it was so much easier to drive through a small you know, external door out into the courtyard. So it was one of those things that I don't think we'd properly realized, but it's something that makes the car so easy to position and makes you feel so comfortable going quickly in it.